I think we're ready for the, uh, the first slide about deep frying. Um, and we've got a, a guest host coming up here shortly. Uh, Tim, can you get me that first slide, please? And um, oh man, boy, this this is a fun one. And and uh, our guest host Bob's going to have several uh, notes to talk about here. But I think this picture says it all in terms of uh, the tape measure. <laughs> Deep frying a turkey, from what we learned today, can be dangerous. And we've heard horror stories from. Uh, folks probably with an earshot that we're not going to name, who have um, <laughs> nearly burnt down their house. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to bring in our guest host, Bob Campbell, who's also our host tonight um, here at his property in Strongsville, to talk a little bit about what you need for, for uh, deep frying a turkey. Thanks, guys, for having me. Appreciate it. I've had a good day. Great day. Bob, what equipment, what's the basics that we need for deep frying this turkey? Uh, you need a fire base to, to, to heat it, obviously. And then you need a five gallon pot to be able to put the turkey down in. You need a carrier, which is this right here, the part of it to hold it up. Um, you need a hook, uh, a carrier hook to drop it down into. You need a thermometer. You need a couple of thermometers. You need um, a thermometer to measure the, and, and monitor the heat oil. And then you need an instant thermometer, which they showed you how to measure there to make sure that you got the uh, 157, 158 degree temperature. You need propane tank to feed it and gloves. Those are the basics equipment you need, Trevor. And, and Bob, I think there's something important about that picture. Can we go back to that picture, please, about the, the setup? Bob's obviously done this more than once and he's probably learned the hard way a couple times. <laughs> um, and you'll see that we're measuring here. Bob's suggesting that, uh, the previous slide, please, uh, previous, uh, you that go. you're setting up about 10 to 12 feet away from your house at minimum. You do not want to do this in your garage. Do not. <laughs> and do not. if it's a windy day and we're outside and that's our excuse, we want to cook in a garage, what's an alternative to control that wind? Very simple. Just grab a couple pieces of plywood, anything you have, uh, and, and build a barrier on the way the wind's coming to at you. To break the wind. Or you can go in, you know, at the side of your house, again, away from the house, but at the side of the house to take away that wind thrust. But do not do it in the garage. He, he alluded to it that I, I have a couple cases where there's been fires in a structure on a deck because of, of trying to do it. And, so. and what's most likely to catch on fire in this scenario? The, 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 the uh, oil's overflowing and catching that fire and then it has a flash point and it takes off. And so that's a good transition to the next part, which um, I think next slide is about oil. What type of oil and how to measure how much you need? I, I use peanut oil. It's got a, a, a high flash point. You're going to cook this at, at, you're going to bring it up to 400 degrees. And when you put it in, the turkey in, it's going to lower to 350. You want to cook it at 350 degrees. So I, I'm, I've always used peanut oil and, and it works for me. Are there alternatives? Just make sure it's got a high flash point. The peanut oil actually adds a flavor. The night before, when you're prepping your turkey, well, I have uh, three things that are, are, are must do's. You got to clean your, your turkey 100% and make sure that it's clean and, and to your point dry, but making sure that you clean out the gizzards and neck that are usually put on the inside of it. So you clean it out, then you take your pot, your five gallon pot, and you uh, put the turkey in it with the carrier, and you then fill it with water up to about within about an inch, inch and a half of the top of the turkey. Pull the turkey out and scratch a, a mark on it, measure it, and it's going to be six to seven inches. Where that, where that, it's going to drop. Where that water settled down. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And, and then when you go to put the oil in, you put the oil to that mark and measure it out. That way, when it's boiling, the boiling will come up and cover that extra inch and a half that you put the oil below, and then you uh, it'll boil and, and, and be fine. It won't hurt it. Plus, you won't have the splashing out of it. Today, I, I, what did we have? A couple drops on the pad? Yeah. Really wasn't bad at all. No, not for prep for the turkey. You, well, we, we brined it. This was the brined turkey that we got, which is outstanding again. But then uh, we injected it. We used a... Um, a uh, injection that Adam had and makes, and, and I'm a huge believer in it. I use chicken it a lot. Chicken stock and butter. Chicken, chicken stock and butter. So for those of you that wanted butter on the, underneath, get it into the meat. Get it where the tasty part is yeah. and get it injection. And it's pretty simple. Again, you, you warm it up a little bit and you get a good injection device 
and you put it in and don't make a lot of holes. You can put one in, you can put in one spot and maneuver it around so that you get the leg, the thigh, the breast. And, and if you want, you can cut garlic uh, chips and shove in that hole if you want. It just holds it in. And so, Bob, you mentioned something about splashing. We talked about the fire. So to repeat, you want to measure how much oil you put in the pan by using water the night before to measure on the bird. Remember where that mark is on the bird, on the pot. Mark it. If you put too much oil, when you submerge this bird in, it's going to overflow onto the flame, and there's your fire. Yeah. So we, that's the first problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a huge problem. I mean, you, you can have a lot of fun doing this, yeah. but you've got to be smart and safe. Just like even if you're roasting or you're, you're smoking, just... Be smart about it. Prep advance. Yeah. Get that turkey 100% thought out. Oil and water don't mix in any way, no. shape, or form. So, bald bird. And then you mentioned a pad. If you notice in that first photo, Bob had a pad underneath his, his turkey fryer. Again, if you don't care about your lawn or your driveway, it doesn't matter. But take a piece of cardboard or anything you have that you are going to have some splash. You don't want it to, to leave a mark. Uh, so, just yeah. a nice little pro tip there. yeah it doesn't need to be a fancy pad i just do so many turkeys uh each year year i've been doing it for 30 plus years i just kind of get it and simplify now that bird this this turkey after you brine it you did put a dry rub on it correct i did good Overnight. call i forgot good thank you so after i injected it i put a dry rub on it and and then i just got it out today the two hours in advance and then i put a little bit uh, more on it so you can do it all now, when you're going to, your oil's hot, what temperature do you get your oil to? Uh, you you want to get it to about 375 to 400. Because again, when you put that in, it's in, if you watch the video, I put it in about an inch at a time. It took, my, I'm going to say three, four, five minutes to get it down in there. But you don't need to rush it because, get, again, you don't you're putting, yeah, you don't want that splash. Again, so lower and higher. There's moisture, oil, and water. Correct, correct. It says, uh, is plaid required to cook a proper Thanksgiving dinner? I would well, say, if you could hear me, I'd say, I'd say no, uh, but we did have to cut down the trees to smoke the turkey, yeah. and this is the color that works the best. Plaid and good looks was what it took. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and back to the frying of the turkey, we had, so now we've got it in the oil, we're at 400 degrees, it's going to drop for, for 350 degrees. I think, Tim, there's another slide about the time. So it's difficult to take a temperature when it's submerged and boiling oil so bob's got a pretty much a gold standard that's almost precise science and how many minutes per pound are we looking at three three and a half minutes per pound and i'm telling you he's right it's a science yeah um i've, and, I've done a hundred turkeys and never had one and, and obviously with that you're you're usually within a certain weight class though correct yeah yeah you you're for that five pound pot 15 pounds is about the max you're okay, going to get in there. in there, both from a capacity of the circumference of the uh, 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 pot, but also the, the weight of that turkey of where it's going to come up to. Right. It, well, otherwise, you have to get a bigger pot. Right. And this was a 12 and a half pound turkey. Absolutely. And it was great. Yep, yeah. it was 12 and a half pounds, 42 minutes. Perfect. But there's, it, uh, I think you guys are going to put the uh, sheet of do's and don'ts it's a whole process of how to do the deep frying yeah, of Bob, the turkey. Bob made an awesome document for us. Uh, so we're going to show this with everybody. It's better than any <laughs> But it's got the do's and the don'ts. And uh, there's some pretty important do's of the 12, 10 to 12 feet from the uh, house, the quality of oil that you use. But, uh, you know, like anything in cooking, have fun doing it. Yeah. It's really having fun doing it. I think there's something too we point out that there's a photo in the the first photo we talked about the or we saw a fire extinguisher in that photo. Again, your open open flame and a oil that's gonna catch fire. Correct. You wanna have a fire extinguisher and A B C will work fine because B is rated for, for oils and fuels. Uh, technically you want a type F for a cooking oil. Good luck finding it at Home Depot. So if you can find something that has a B rating for your fire extinguisher, that's gonna be your best uh, best bet. Um, what's your opinion question? What is your favorite way to cook a turkey? Smoked, grilled, deep fried, or some other way from Adam and Michelle? Um, can you guys hear me all right? Is it working? Am I coming through? All right. Um, I have not yet, I've, it, this is really bad to say in all my years of cooking, I've never had a deep fried turkey. So 
I had a bite of this today, and I gotta say it's really up there. Um, learning how to smoke turkey properly this past year, I really love that. But you know, I'm kind of a purist. I really do love a perfectly roasted a, turkey. A really nice roasted turkey. So. I, and I would say, you know, not to to avoid the question, but I like you know variety, and it's right. I think the joy of of what we do for cooking for a living for you know butchering and slaughtering animals the more ways we can add respect to how the quality of that animal if it's roasting if it's deep frying it if it's smoking it i think there's something to be learned from each presentation it serves a different purpose uh, and there's nothing wrong with with changing up every year if you do each technique correctly you can have an exception you know the same experience in terms of, of happiness at the end of the day